Hello friends, welcome to another session of English Literature. So friends, in this video, you will get a clear idea of how Epiphany is used by James Joyce in A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. So in this video, I am going to tell you the chapter-wise uses of the Epiphanies by James Joyce. So watch the video till the end. Here you go. So at first, I am going to read the introduction. So in this introduction, you will find the definition of Epiphany, who first used the word Epiphany and why James Joyce uses Epiphany as a medium of expression. So in A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, James Joyce uses a number of epiphanies to show the protagonist Stephen Dedalus's development as an artist. Derived from a Greek word epiphania, epiphany means appearance or manifestation. The word epiphany, literary meaning showing forth, is originally a biblical term referring to the festival commemorating the manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles, often called the Magi. In literary terms, an epiphany is that moment in the story where a character achieves realization, awareness or a feeling of knowledge, after which events are seen through the prism of this new light in the story. The word, however, is adapted by the greatest Irish writer James Joyce to encompass his artistic vision, first expressed in the preface to the Dubliners and then defined in a more detail in Stephen Hero. James Joyce used this term in his writings to indicate a sudden eye-opener regarding the nature of a person or situation. He said that it is the moment in which the soul of the communist object seems to us radiant and may be manifested through any chance, word or gesture. James Joyce, who was almost blind from childhood and lived in the world of sounds, wanted to express the immediate consciousness as reality, which he called an epiphany. His a portrait of the artist as a young man clearly demonstrates such epiphanies to signify the moment when all of a sudden the person approaches into the heart of things and experiences a sudden spiritual manifestation. As Lee T. Lehman remarked that the subject of a portrait of the artist as a young man is the development of a young man from creature to creator. His sensitivity, his passion, his superciliousness, his necessary irresponsibility, his struggling to raise himself above his companions, all these and more are part of the complex subject of a portrait of the artist as a young man. So friends, this was the introduction. Now let us jump to our next section. From this section, you will find a clear idea of how epiphany is used by James Joyce in a portrait of the artist as a young man. In a portrait of the artist as a young man, Joyce's emphasis is on the evolution of an artist from a child to a mature artist. Here, epiphany is used to resolve and resolute a conflict with the to be an artist faced with. The journey of Stephen Dedalus from his very tender infancy till he becoming an artist is presented through certain epiphanies to express the inflow of Stephen's conscious and its changing schedules. S. Murali has commented that Stephen is a self-portrait of his creator. For Joyous, the artist is artificer, the fashioner of reality who has to deliberately free himself from bondages of all sorts. At the end of each chapter, the epiphanies are skillfully used in a portrait of the artist as a young man. So in chapter 1, Stephen act in his childhood meets certain conflicts that makes him confused. With the baffling impressions, Stephen perceives the world of elders. He oscillates and vacillates over the implicit fate on the elders and his helpless insecurity. He has absolute trust, justice and moral from his elders, yet how they quarrel over political and religious matter he cannot understand. So naturally there is a marked difference between the expectation and reality. But ultimately Stephen triumphs when he gets rustic at school and he is being hailed as hero. Thus, at the end, the finality of resulting the conflict and achieving justice is marked by epiphany. So, after the victory of justice in chapter 2, when Stephen hears the talk of his father, his father Conmy, about the panty bat incident, he abruptly realizes that the incident was just a mock as no action has been taken against anyone and the inc incident was ignored without the knowledge of Stephen. Then after his sexual encounter and epiphany at the end of chapter 2, he becomes weighted down by his own sinful acts and by the end of chapter 3, he reveals in the life-changing potential that he now faces and the power and potential of another life, a life of grace and virtue and happiness. 
An example of a sudden flash of insight occurs in the fourth chapter when Stephen, almost acquiescing to the director's offers of priesthood, but after seeing a quartet of young men dancing and singing down the road, he realizes that the colorless, emotionless priesthood is not going to be his vocation, even though from childhood he had been attracted to that profession. In the end of chapter 5, Joyce shows the finest epiphany through the picture of the young girl wedging in the sea. As Joyce puts in that, a girl stood before him in midstream, alone and still, gazing out to sea, and when she felt his presence and the worship of her eyes turned to him in quiet sufferance of his grace, without shame or wantonness. From this moment, the girl becomes for him the embodiment of beauty and art, and in a flash of insight, Stephen recognizes his artistic vocation. Thus, the two aspects of Epiphany bring the fourth chapter to his rapturous climax. The Epiphany has also a deeper, more philosophical significance, the concern with time, and Stephen draws attention to this in his diary towards the end of the novel. As he says that, the past is consumed in the present and the present is living only because it brings forth the future. Thus clearly, Stephen's view is that each moment is the culminative product of the past decisions and actions and brings about the future by the same process which is clear when standing with Emma, he remembers his past moments on the hotel grounds with Aileen, which also anticipates the future. By the end of the novel, Stephen has realized the power of his own contribution not only to his self-development but also in promoting the uncreated conscience of my race. Stephen here does not refer the word epiphany directly. But he does define a very similar phenomenon in his aesthetic theory when he discusses the various stages of apprehending a work of art. After referring the wholeness, mean integrators of a work of art, he perceives its rhythm, mean consonantia, and finally realizes its radiance, means claritas. The notion of epiphany does not necessarily imply any moral or aesthetic content and reveals only truth. But it has a lot in common with the process of claritas, something which Stephen has great difficulty in elucidating. After trying to explain it as radiance and whatness, he finally uses the phrases luminous, silent, stasis, and enchantment of the heart. These phrases connect it with the definition of epiphany in Stephen Hero as a form of highly rare field spiritual manifestation. As in the book, The Stephen Hero by James Joyce, Stephen planning a phase of the mind, book of epiphanies, tells us that by an epiphany he meant a sudden spiritual manifestation, whether the vulgarity of speech or of gesture or in a memorable phase of mind itself. He believed that it was for the man of letters to record these epiphanies with extreme care, seeing that they themselves are the most delicate and evanescent of moments. So now we come closer to our conclusion. So from the above discussion, it can be said that in a portrait of the artist as a young man, James Joyce used epiphany not only as a significant literary technique, but also as an important philosophical concept. An epiphany therefore in Joyce's sense shows forth the full reality of what is seen and observed, but not in logical, analytical form. The reality appears to the mind in a flash of inspiration triggered by an ordinary conversation or incident. Stephen's spiritual manifestation and his aesthetic satisfaction are presented through the epiphanies, which is a sudden revelation of the inner truth by paralleling a visual moment. So William Shakespeare also makes use of epiphany in his play Hamlet. It is when Hamlet is on the ship sailing to England. Till then, he was overburdened with the thinking and planning a flawless revenge on his father's murderer, means Claudius, who was his uncle. Suddenly, there is a flash of realization and he says, there's a divinity that shapes our hands. Rough you, them how you will. So in the artistry of literary revise of Stephen's rejection of priesthood, his spilling of nationality, his self-search in an artist in exile are presented through certain revelation meticulously and forcefully. And thus, James Joyce used epiphanies in a portrait of the artist as a young man. So friends, on this note, I am ending up my discussion. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you find this information relevant, then please like this video, share this video. And for more videos, please subscribe to my channel. So bye-bye. See you in the next session very soon.